I'm Cyril Jordan with the Flame and Grooves. This is my buddy Ace, and you're watching Reality Check, and you better check it out. We're back in the mission. I haven't been here in weeks, and it's just as uh, getting more hipster as ever. But we're curing the hipster curse of the mission, and we have the Flaming Groovies, 50th anniversary right here at the chapel. So for all you hardcore heads out there who appreciate the old school, this is a place to be, and we'll see you here. Well, we'll probably see you here. Flaming Groovies tonight. Stay tuned. At the chapel, in the mission, San Francisco. The reality check, of course, was here. Uh-oh, a hipster is sneaking up on me. I wonder what I should do. Hello. Hi. <laughs> waiting 50 years for this. Well, you waiting 50 years for this, huh? Holy mackerel. We got the groovy, groovy fans out here. Oh, 50 yeah. years. 50, well, yeah, and it's it's been a while. <laughs> All right. All right. You making a, a movie there, eh? Nah, nah, there's nothing in here. <laughs> nothing here to see. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see all these kids inside. All right, yeah. we'll do. <laughs> The button man, too. Yes, yep. we'll All be right. there. with one of my heroes, and also one of my dear friends, the mighty Chris Wilson, Flaming Groovies 5-0, baby. That's can you right. freaking believe it? Yeah, I can. Now, I envision this. Well, I mean, it's only the 45th. For you. For me. Right. So. So, so um, there, there was a, a thing before you, and then it transitioned. So how there did that was come many things before me. There was... True. But Life coming up from the oceans yeah. and <laughs> taking hold of land. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, how did you become involved with this whole thing? You, you hung out in, in the San Francisco scene me. as well, correct? Um, no, actually, I was brought here mm, from? Um, from L.A. Mm -hmm. um, by, you know, as if by order. In fact, mm -hmm. it was by order. Because I'd gone to join a band with some fe uh, uh, fellows, mm -hmm. uh, friends of mine, mm -hmm. from, um, from Massachusetts that I've been in a band with called, um, they were called Prince and the Poppers, and they were called a lot of things. We had a couple of bands called the Gridleys, and it never really kind of worked out. You Sorry know. about that. I was all right. That's, that's Peter Case. It's called it's <laughs> Peter Case. Yeah, I mean, you got Peter Case walking, walking in front of the camera. <laughs> the, you know, he's getting ready to run. That's a bitch, you know. There we go. I mean, you know, that is, that's made the interview, right. basically. That's rock so, history right you know, there. I mean, fuck me. I, mean, I <laughs> wish I was him uh, without the surgery, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> he loved so, that. 2013, suddenly there's a call, no, this was, this was, uh, and it's back on. Know, Cyril and I had met again in 2011 in London, where I was living, where I've been living for some years, and we just went off of fuck sake. Yeah. yeah. Fuck all that box, yeah. you know. Like, right. uh, I I had a group for some years in in London called the Grooving Flames, and we made a very good living just playing flaming groovy songs, nothing else, no other. You know, no other covers or anything like that. For the most part, as far as I can remember, it's probably ain't far, but. <laughs> so you did it. You were you were you were keeping the name out there. It, indeed, you know, and uh, Groovies hadn't been around for some years, and and Cyril had come over with uh, Miriam Lina and the A Bones, him and Roy, which I thought they were undersupported mm. by this band. I have to say, you know, mm. I'll say this on record. I thought it was dreadful, you know. Oh, they were great. They were dreadful. Mm -hmm. Just to make, let people know that.
in the modern age, here we are. New single. Now, this yes. is the first new shit in 30 years. Yep. Are you excited? And there's one of your songs that you first, the first song you wrote with Zero. Excited? Yeah. Okay. You're asking me if I'm excited. You're, you're asking, you're asking if I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know. Fucking cool. Of course he's excited. <laughs> he crunched mm. my hat. <laughs> Every guy, everything this guy says is nonsense. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> Of the early stuff, what would you say is your personal favorite? Uh, I guess Teenage Head is my favorite of our albums, is just as a complete piece. You know, I think it's a, it's a really good complete piece. And it still holds up today. I, mean, I think so. I do, the kids I, love it. Up. I agree. I agree. I think that album holds up really well. Mm -hmm. And you know, the story is, if you want to believe it, that mm -hmm. Mick Jagger said, "Well." That, oh, that should have been our album. You know? Oh, yeah, he said something. Yeah, there is a quote out there. He did say something like that, and I talked to Marianne Faithful recently, and she said, oh, yeah, that's the truth. They, they were totally big fans of ours, so... And that makes me very happy. James Farrell, there he is, kids. And you, sir. I'm Don Sacone from Rue 66. Nice. Yes. Oh. I saw this guitar at the, at the Whiskey of Go-Go, 1979. Wow. Uh, summer of 79. They did like three, four nights in a row. The, the Phantom Movers opened for the Groovies at the Whiskey. Best shows I ever saw in my life. Wow. And I've seen a lot of bands. Nice. And that was the guitar he used. Wow, very nice. This guitar, um, I bought... I, I traded, I had a red Marshall stack, which was unusable because it was just too loud where we played. So I went to Leo's when we came back from London, and I traded it for this and the Fender Twin that I've still got, pre-CBS Twin. So later on, I'm playing with the Van de Movers, and it needs a setup, and so I send our guy, Dave Hirschland, down to the local guitar guy to do the work on it. So he calls me and he goes, well, James, I said, what? He goes, they won't give your guitar back. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? And they said, it was stolen. So, so they hooked me up with this guy, Rick Ellswood, great guy, who was the guitar player for Dr. Hook in the Medicine Show. So we met down at the, at the guitar place and he went, yeah, this was stolen from me. Somebody, somebody, jumped him when he was in his car and he had to jump out of his car to get away they were going to kill him and he left the guitar so it ended up at leo's so you know he was very nice and just said you know i don't play grutches anymore i play fenders and you didn't do anything and you play it and you keep it so he let me keep it and then he goes it was given to me by Neil Young no. when, I, when I was a big groupie of Buffalo Springfield. This is the Buffalo Springfield guitar. Well, it's one. He, how many Gretches did Neil Young have? You know? uh, I bet he had a bunch. The new member, the new guy. In the flame and groovies, wow. and my question for him is, how the hell did you get into this mess? <laughs> mm, good question. I met Cyril in 2006 when I was living in Los Angeles. Uh, what was it? He had a show at the Cat Club on Sunset with the Magic Christian. Magic Christian. Nice. Paul Koff was in the band, and Prairie Prince was playing drums. Alec Palau was on bass. I went to the show. I introduced myself to Cyril at the end of the show, and I just said... Uh, if you ever need a bass player or a drummer, here's my number, you know. Nice. I'm a big Groovies fan. The, the stalwart, the anchor, 
of the Flame Groovies, also the quiet one, Mr. George Alexander. How are you, sir? <laughs> See? I had been contributing to a, a solo album that Chris was doing in London. You know, I was doing it remotely through my Mac. You know, I added bass to it. And they got some of the other ex-members to contribute to it. Roy contributed, Cyril, you know, James, and... Uh, so that was a bit of a genesis there. Yeah, and so what happened, I think, was that the promoters got word and thought that we were reforming the band. And next thing I know, these guys are telling me they're getting these offers, you know. I said, well, how much? And he said, blah, 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 blah. And I said, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for that much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll do it for that. So what is this, reality check? Yes. yes. Yep. Are we going to check reality? We're going to check, <laughs> we're going to check your reality. The new song, Crazy Macy, how did that one? In about 10 minutes. One night I was watching The Untouchables. And Walter Winchell was talking about this crazy woman who went on a six-month uh, shooting spree robbing banks. She had a machine gun, right? They called her Crazy Macy. Uh, Sounds like a song. Yeah. And when I heard that name, I went, what? And I backed it up, listened to it again, and I wrote it 10 min in 10 minutes. Cyril Jordan, the mastermind behind this madness. Thanks for having me on the show. That's right. See you guys. See you later.